Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This actually feels really strange because I have not spoken to a camera in over a month. I hope you've been enjoying all of my Disney World content I've been uploading. Sadly, those vlogs are done for now, but I hope you'll agree that I've managed to provide quite a lot of magical content this year with Disneyland, three trips to Disney World in the space of a year. It's been kind of crazy. And with visiting so often, I actually get a lot of people asking me for tips on visiting the parks and how to make the most of your time. So I've decided to compile 10 of my top tips to share with you today about visiting Walt Disney World in 2022 slash 2023 because we're almost there. Also I used to be a cast member in 2017 and 2018 at Walt Disney World Resort and I visited throughout my life so I feel like I have a pretty good perspective to share some tips with you today. I did pop my ears on for the occasion but as you can tell from my jumper it's pretty chilly in the UK right now but it's time to hop into the tips and if you see me looking down at all I've written them on my notes. So tip number one is about Genie Plus. So Genie Plus is the new version of Fast Pass, which is actually paid. I know that's pretty controversial, but it is a new reality now. It's not going anywhere. So my tip for this is if you're going to get it, I would only suggest getting it for Magic Kingdom. So the way Genie Plus works is that you can't make another reservation for a different attraction until either you've ridden that attraction or two hours have passed. So for example, if you wake up at 7am and you get a slot for smugglers run at 10 a.m you then can't make a second reservation until nine by which point it's been a couple of hours and a lot of the reservation slots for other attractions in the park will have been taken so then for example you might get slinky dog dash at 6 p.m and then by the time it gets to another two hours later you might have no reservation slots left that you can actually book aside from like muppets 3d or something i don't know if i explain that in the best way so i will link down below a full kind of guide on booking genie plus but the reason i say you should only get it for magic kingdom is there are so many attractions in that park that you're not going to run out of slots later in the day you can just keep booking them until park close you might not be getting necessarily like big thunder mountain or splash mountain but you're going to be able to get something and maximize that purchase that you may at the start of the day. I have used it before at Hollywood Studios and like I said you can only do about two or three rides. I know the Disney World official website does specify in the language that that's probably the reality but when I had it in Magic Kingdom we actually did I don't know maybe like six seven eight attractions by using Genie Plus. Epcot again I would say don't bother with it because the main attractions there are going to be Soarin, Frozen Ever After, Ratatouille and Test Track. It's not actually that many rides that you're going to have to be running to at Rope Drop and then Cosmic Rewind is still a virtual boarding group right now so obviously you can't buy that unless you do an individual lightning lane. So Genie Plus is kind of pointless in Epcot, I think personally. Obviously if you have like unlimited money, go ahead, do it. But this is a tip for budgeting and only using Genie Plus when it is really needed, I would say. Then over in Animal Kingdom, again, I would just say there's not really enough attractions to do there. Like on my most recent trip, we got to Animal Kingdom maybe two or three hours before park closed and we managed to do the safaris as a walk-on, we did Everest as a walk-on, we did Flight of Passage, all in the space of a few hours because the lines were so short by that point. So yeah, for me personally, Genie Plus is only for Magic Kingdom. My tip number two is going to be bring breakfast bars with you or something to have an on-the-go breakfast. For example, I would have Nature Valley bars, granola bars, some kind of fruit and just have it on the bus or in the room before leaving to go to the park. I would say that to-go breakfast options are probably the weakest area when it comes to Disney quick service. Specifically in the parks, you're probably just going to get something from Starbucks for example, which let's face it, none of it is that great. It's just your regular case line treats. There will be some options like Mickey Waffles for example, if you're staying in a resort but I do find generally it's pretty expensive for what you're getting and I would rather save my money to spend on lunch dinner and snacks throughout the day so come prepared with your snacks for breakfast and also if you don't have that big of a breakfast you can then just start eating the snacks earlier which are more exciting just jumping off of this I would say getting a dining reservation for breakfast is great to save money in the sense that you can kind of just fill up on one meal especially if it's a buffet and not spend a whole bunch throughout the rest of the day but if you want to try loads of different snacks then having breakfast as your main like dining reservation is not going to allow you to do all of that you don't really have the room to eat as much some people do have a really unlimited appetite which is great for them but for me personally i'm just not going to be able to have everything i wanted to try if i've had that huge breakfast in the morning on top of that having a reservation for breakfast means that you're going to miss out on the key rope drop hours when you can get loads of rides done in a short space of time so it's kind of like a toss-up speaking of dining 
reservations. My tip number three comes around making those very hard to get reservations that you really want. I'm talking Cinderella's Royal Table, Be Our Guest, Ohana, Aka Shoes Now It's Back. Those can be so hard to get, especially if you kind of like set your heart on that experience, which is why I am so happy to say this video is sponsored by Mouse Dining. Mouse Dining is an online service that removes all of the frustration of booking a Disney dining reservation. You can specify the restaurant date and time that you are looking for and they will alert you when that slot becomes available. This means you can stop just refreshing the button loads and loads of times trying to see if it will come up, which I have done in the past when I've not been, you know, on it with making that reservation. Thinking about Lamp Light Lounge in California, oh my gosh, that was so stressful. We did get it in the end, but wow, I wish I just had a service like this to alert me when there was a slot available. Mouse Dining offer both monthly and annual plans, so whether you're someone going for one Disney trip or you're an annual pass holder who goes all the time, there's a great option for you, especially now when people are like hoarding down your reservations. I'm looking at you, Space220 Facebook groups. I actually have a checkout code for you to use to get one month free with Mouse Dining, and that's gonna be Emily MD. I'll also drop it down below so you can check them out. But thank you once again to Mouse Dining for sponsoring this video. And now on to tip number four, and this is probably my biggest tip that I have, get a fuel rod. Especially right now with how much Disney requires you to use your phone, whether it's making Genie Plus reservations, dining reservations, checking wait time, looking at bus times, getting around the park. You're also gonna be taking photos, videos, making TikToks, reels, and all those things really drain your battery fast. But a fuel rod is this little portable charger you can plug into your phone, also your camera if you vlog like me, and it charges it on the go. It costs just $30, and you can get them at various stations throughout the park. And once you've paid that $30, you have access to unlimited swaps for life of your fuel rod at Disney parks. I got mine back in 2018 and it is the most amazing service. You just pop in an empty one, press swap, and they give you a brand new charged one. Don't have to worry about charging up your charger. Honestly, I don't know why everyone doesn't have one already. The stations are located throughout the parks, but if you need to find one, you can just ask a cast member and they will point you in the right direction. And they do have fuel rod stations, not just in Disney. I know in America they have them in like various airports as well. You may have to pay for those swaps, but if for Disney, they are unlimited free swaps. They tried charging for them a couple years back and people revolted so badly that they are free and hopefully they stay that way forever. My next tip for something to bring with you is a poncho or fold away rain jacket. The hurricane season in Florida runs from June right the way through to November. I was actually unlucky enough to experience my very first hurricane on my most recent trip, Hurricane Ian. Vlog for that will be linked down below. But hurricane season doesn't just mean big hurricanes, it also means daily tropical storms in the summer which will happen around 3pm. They can happen more often than that and even if the weather says it's going to be blue skies and sunshine, I would always pack a rain jacket just in case. It's best to get one that kind of like folds up and goes in your bag really really tight just so you're not tempted to kind of like leave it behind and be like oh no we'll be fine because then you're in the parks and suddenly you're paying $10 for a disposable rain poncho you'll never wear again. But speaking of checking forecasts, I would really recommend the app AccuWeather. They do hyperlocal weather for your area. So for example, it could be raining in Magic Kingdom and really sunny in Animal Kingdom. And the app will be able to tell you exactly what's happening and what will happen in the next four hours. I'm kind of obsessed with this app, to be honest. So let's see what's happening in Magic Kingdom right now. So they just had a kind of hurricane. So apparently there's no precipitation for at least 60 minutes. And then the next four hours, we can see apparently it's nice and clear, which is lovely for those people who have flown in and had a couple days of crazy weather. This is like my new version of when you check the app and see the wait times, even though you're literally on the other side of the world. Okay, on to my next tip, which is about fireworks. I would really suggest seeing the Magic Kingdom fireworks somewhere other than the hub. I know especially for Enchantment right now, it is really recommended to see them in that area or on Main Street, because you have the projections on the side of Main Street, which really adds to the show, and the projections are a very important part of that show. But some of my favorite memories are watching the fireworks from somewhere else, because there's less people around. You can really just enjoy, dance around, soak up the moment. I've watched them a couple of times from behind the carousel and it's just so beautiful and you have like fireworks from all around you. You're like spinning around trying to see them like where are they coming from and it's so magical and wonderful. I have seen people stand by the tangled restrooms and watch them with the lanterns all aglow which looks beautiful. There's quite a trend right now people trying to watch them from different attractions like People Mover, Seven Dwarves Mine Train, Thunder Mountain which I would love to try and then obviously you can watch them from the resorts as well. So when I stayed at the Grand Floridian we watched them from the little area outside Gasparilla Grill and that was so beautiful you are quite far away but you can still hear the music so it's like pumped in so that's very magical especially with a little treat my mum would get herself a little glass of wine we'd sit and relax it was perfect at the Polynesian as well you can watch them from the beach maybe with a cocktail from Trader Sam's and then at the Contemporary you can watch them from various fire escape areas which isn't like the most official but it's still really fun speaking of the resorts I know people probably have said this before but it cannot be said enough you can visit the resorts even if you are not staying at them the resorts are all so beautiful with their own kind of distinct 
character and you can't really know that until you visit. So for example, on my first program, my parents stayed at Universal off property because in their head they were like, oh, Disney hotels are gonna be really over the top and gaudy and not that kind of thing. I think they were kind of picturing like pop century art of animation, which I think look adorable, but for a lot of adults, like it's not that kind of thing. On the last day of their trip, I booked us lunch at the Grand Floridian Cafe and mum walked into that lobby and said, why am I not staying here now? Like she fell in love with that resort. We stayed there the following year and then we stayed there at Christmas, just gone and it's just so beautiful. Especially at Christmas time. If you're lucky enough to be there right now through to the end of December, go to the Grand. It's so stunning. They have a gingerbread house in the lobby. They have these amazing trees. It smells of gingerbread. It's just incredible. A lot of the resorts decorate for the holidays as well, which is so beautiful to see. But throughout the year as well, it's just so cool to see all their distinct characters. So for example, All Star Movies has really cool photo ops. I've always seen people posing with. Port Orleans French Quarter is the only place on property you can get Mickey shaped beignets. And they are not only adorable, but delicious. The Polynesian has the whole tiki theme down. The Riviera has the most adorable coffee shop. I loved my coffee from there so much. And definitely recommend going there to grab one and then hopping on the Skyliner to Epcot or Studios. At Fort Wilderness, you can go horseback riding, and hire buggies and then across all the resorts they'll all have their own kind of movie night you can go and watch movies under the stars and you can roast marshmallows it's always done like around the evening time and it's free to do but you can also buy s'mores kits if you want to my next tip is for people who are staying at the resorts and it's about the buses so the buses are probably the worst part of any disney trip i would say they are so inconsistent and long and they have multiple stops it's just the whole thing i will shamefully admit i've got quite a lot of ubers in my time just because i don't want to get the bus oh my leg has gone dead again this always happens when i film just give me a sec to die over here. i wish i was not being serious but I, I literally can't feel it so the way the app works is right now you can look at when buses are leaving your hotel to the parks or disney springs however what you can't see is when the buses leave the parks and come back to your hotel which can be quite annoying when you're trying to like plan out your day and you don't want to just leave and then stand on the bus line for 15 20 minutes when you could have been enjoying the park some more i know they probably do this to avoid like clumping and people rushing at once but it's really annoying. The way I do it is when I'm thinking that I want to leave the park, I will look on the app at when buses are leaving the resort and what their arrival time is due at the parks. Then I'll know when a bus is actually going to be there and take me back to the resort. It's obviously not like an official thing, but I would definitely recommend doing that if you want to try and plan out your day a little bit better and avoid standing in the bus line for a long time. Especially in like the middle of the afternoon when you want to hop back to the resort, have some pool time and chill, and then you end up standing for like 25 minutes waiting for a bus because I know they say they're every 20 minutes, but they often on. And then my next tip also relates to the buses, but it's about getting between the parks. So if you are using the bus to park hop, it can be a bit of a sticky situation. The buses that go between like all the different parks are probably the most irregular of all the ones in the service. And there is no app. There is no way to figure out when they're going to come. There is just no hack whatsoever, which can be quite frustrating. So if you're attempting, for example, like a four parks one day situation, I don't know if that's possible right now with park hopping, but if you're going to give it a try and you're kind of reliant on the buses going between the parks, it can be quite annoying standing and waiting for ages. So my tip for this is to get the buses to the resorts rather than the parks. Well, we just went really dark, but let me explain how this works. So for example, if you want to go to Animal Kingdom, I would suggest getting a bus to Animal Kingdom Lodge instead, and then the bus from Animal Kingdom Lodge to Animal Kingdom, because those buses run like every five minutes. They are super regular and you can always rely on them. If you're hoping to go to Epcot, for example, I would suggest getting a bus to Yacht or Beach Club or the boardwalk because then you can just walk in via the world showcase entrance if you want to go to studios the best bet's going to be caribbean beach resort because from there the skyliner goes direct in under 10 minutes and then for magic kingdom you can either go to the contemporary or the grand and then from there you can walk to the park or get the monorail if you want to when i figured out this tip honestly my life was changed for park hopping it is so much better because the buses for those routes are so much more regular than park to park honestly thank me later and enjoy your full parks one day i can't figure out how many i've shared with you now but my last one is going to be use mobile order to reserve your lunch and dinner slots ahead of time especially for somewhere like woody's lunchbox that gets so sold out in advance what you can do is go on the app and you can choose a mobile order collection window so let's just go on here right now type in woody's lunchbox so i can actually click order food here that's really sad even though i'm like not even there it's letting me do it from across the pond she's struggling what's new but what you do is you tap build your order and then from there you can choose an arrival window so even if it's 9 a.m you can choose to pick up at 1 p.m and have like a perfect little lunch whereas if you wait until 12 45 to mobile order the nearest available slot might not be till 4 p.m i know some people hate the idea of this having to decide what you want for lunch before you even had breakfast but for me personally 
My meals were planned out six months in advance. I have a spreadsheet ready. I know I'm gonna eat. I'm ready to order it. Not only do you have your slot secured, you don't have to stand in line when you actually go to pick up your food. You just tap I am here, go to the pickup window, and your food will be ready very, very shortly. Honestly, mobile order is a dream. So like I said, I don't know how many tips I've done by now, but I put a question box up on Instagram and asked for your guys' tips to share because a lot of you have been just as much as I have, even more, and you guys really came through. So here are some of the top tips that you guys have visiting Walt Disney World. One I forgot to mention is make sure you are on top of your park reservations. You don't want to be turned away at the gate. That is from Nata Randall. So yes, that is pretty stressful. You really need to have a park reservation to go into a park right now, which can be made, I think, up to like a year in advance, which is kind of crazy, but you don't want to be left wanting to scan into the park and then being told, sorry, you can't come in today. Park capacity is there for a reason and you'll be turned away. So definitely have those reservations in advance. Oh, wow, this is really cool. Deanna underscore Palmer 97 said, go to the Cinderella restaurant during the fireworks. You can see them through the window. That is another really cool place to see them. Obviously quite expensive compared to, you know, going on Dumbo to watch them, but that would be a pretty incredible experience. So Cameron Meets World said, pace yourself, listen to your body, buy gift cards before the trip to better budget. I would say the gift card tip is actually very good. So I have a Monzo card when I travel, which means that I can kind of load it up with a certain amount of money that I want to spend for the trip. You can top it up more if you need to, but if you kind of like set aside the money ahead of time, almost like a gift card, you are then set and you know how much you've got to play with. And then the whole idea of pace yourself and listen to your body is super important. I've had a couple instances on trips where I have pushed myself too hard. I almost passed out on Sunset Boulevard. It wasn't pretty. Um, it happens, but it shouldn't happen. If you need a break, just take a moment, take a chill, get a snack and just sit back and relax and enjoy the atmosphere. And better yet, go to a resort and then you can fully de-stress away from the parks and kind of like find a quiet spot to chill. If you want to go back into the parks after that, then great. But if not, go to your resort, have an early night. It is not the end of the world if you don't go to see the fireworks every single night of your trip. Nessa of two evils said, get a filtered reusable water bottle for the water fountains with sensitive stomach. I didn't actually mention in this list because I feel like it's been said so many times. You can get free water in the Disney parks from the fountains and also from quick service locations. They give you a little cup of water for free, never pay for the water. It's like $4 for a bottle and it's just so unnecessary when you could spend that money on snacks or souvenirs. This is actually a very good tip because I will say the free water is not, it's not the tastiest. I'll leave it at that. It's, it's not my favorite, but it's quite apt. This tip has come from Nessa of Tea Evils because I almost think of like the free water at Disney World as a necessary evil to get through the trip. I might try that next time though. That's a pretty good tip. XX It's Soph XX said, visiting resorts on a monorail or Skyliner Cruel. Resorts are one of the best parts of Walt Disney World. I'm still bitter that I have planned twice now to go to Disney World and do a monorail crawl and twice it has not been able to happen. The first time there was a storm which meant we only got to the Polynesian and the Grand Floridian and the second time there was a hurricane. So it just got wiped out entirely. Um, so I have a reason to go back. If anyone wants to go to Disney World and do a monorail crawl or a Skyliner crawl, let me know. But definitely, yes, I know I said visit the resorts, but the best way to do that probably is the ones on the monorail or the Skyliner because you've got a whole bunch in a row and also try loads of treats and drinks in one go. My friend Mel, Melanie underscore Wheeler, also suggested try and squeeze in fireworks from the Skyliner, make time for the most magical flight in the sky. Again, another great place to watch the fireworks. People really should just try and venture out and not stand right by the partner statue. Go somewhere else have any memory. So Catherine RKW said very specific but row 9 on Guardians is amazing if you're happy to wait an extra minute. So the one and only time I've been on Guardians we asked to wait for the front row and that was unparalleled, that was unmatched, that was incredible. I love the experience but I don't know what row 9 is, is that the back row maybe? I guess again I'll have to go back and do it. And there's actually some really lovely tips from people saying for example Ashley Cochrane 4 just be happy you're there, the world is crazy and it isn't the same experience as past years, but who cares, you're there, enjoy the magic and the joy, you're there. And I want to reiterate this point because I see a lot of negativity online about visiting Disney World at the moment and how much has changed and how the magic is lost and like it's not the same experience. No, it's not the same, but it's still magical. And I feel like the average person going is not knowing all the little intricacies and all the things that have specifically changed. Like this snack isn't back or this is closed or this has been modified. Like. Most families won't know or care that something slightly different has changed. For me personally, the magic is definitely still there and alive and well. It is a more expensive experience and with that comes higher expectations. But if you can just step back and relax and enjoy the magic, I know relax and Disney doesn't seem to match up, but if you can really just like 
taking the moment. The magic is still there and that's why it's my favorite place in the whole entire world. So there you have it, a bunch of tips from me and my followers about visiting Disney World right now. If you have any more tips, feel free to comment them down below for other people to read. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more fun and magic to come. I'm thinking next year is the year that I really make the most of being pretty close to Disneyland Paris because I have not been for the 30th yet and I need to get over there ASAP. So lots of magic is to come. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Bye. Oh, the jungle VIP I've reached the top and had to stop And that's what's bothering me